Alright, this should be an easy move at the slip. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Hmm, cool. Nice, nice. This is the car, this is the track, and this is somebody getting black flagged for sarcasm. Literally like went Hulk mode on him. <laughs> So this is the final lap. I'm not even gonna bother showing this whole race. Uh, this will be the first race of the video, I suppose. Moving to the outside to go around Luis Miranda ahead of us, car number 13, the last lap, looking to gain P6 from this. Uh, end up not making the outside work, actually slide out a little bit. Very easy to do on that corner as you kind of lose camber and the car tends to get pushed wide. Now, uh, before we go any further, I want you guys to know that Luis Miranda, we've run into in the past when he intentionally wrecked us multiple times on Road America. I have a video on it. If you guys want to pop over there and watch it, I will link it on the screen right now. But, uh, yeah, so this is the first time we've run into him since that week. We gain a position, both of us going down the mountain, so now the fight is for P5. Out of the elbow, looking for a really solid run, going to dip deep, cut back focusing completely on the exit plus the slipstream. We are one-tenth behind him at the start of the Conrad. This should be an easy move for us. If you saw the intro, you probably know it's about to happen. i looking to go around the inside, which turns into the outside of the chase, but... <sighs> yeah. I was pr pretty, pretty upset about this one, and I'll show you guys a couple of angles. I've been that... <laughs> Okay, so here's a couple of angles of it. I'm not sure what was going on here. He was aiming literally past the apex with tons of room to go still on the Conrad. So I'm fairly certain that this was intentional. I mean, I can't be for sure, but it looks intentional. It felt intentional. And this being my first run in with him since the last time he wrecked me, I assumed it was. And then I let go of my brakes, end up absolutely shipping that guy through the air. Totally, totally my fault on that one. Luis, what on earth, man? Hold the fucking brake, you idiot. That was completely my bad, uh, Harley. Harley ended up um, seeing what happened, and I think he loosened up his, his fury on me a little bit. He's intentionally wrecked me twice before, Harley. I would appreciate if somebody else would have reported him, too. This is my first time seeing him since the last time it happened. That was totally on me for letting go of the brake, so Harley, I'm sorry. I, I had him held, and I let go of him stupidly. Yeah, no problem. See you at the moment. Big shout to Harley for not ripping my head off. That was, I mean, I felt so, that that race in general was just one to forget. Luis came across four P5, gaining 77 I rating. We lost 69, Harley lost 72. Yeah, uh, this will definitely be a race to forget. Lost a, a bit of I, or uh, safety rating as well, obviously from that. Next race. Now, I lost the replay file, so you're going to have to trust me that this happened on lap nine, fighting for the lead. I'm on the outside, going into turn two. Very, uh, very good overtaking opportunity. Really not around the outside. It's typically the inside, but here we are going around the outside. We send it a little bit deep. We have Vitor Gasolini on the inside. We're ahead of him through most of the corner, trying to hold him tight which if you know this corner, I mean, it doesn't really make that much of a difference because the tighter you are, almost the quicker you can go or the quicker you can get the car turned, at least there's more camber, which leads to him actually getting ahead in like the mid corner and then coming out of the corner, we're basically side by side. However, still in an attempt to try and hold him tight, he ends up taking a bit of the inside curb on the exit, which can loosen up the car. So that sure enough happens. I dart to the outside to try and avoid him or avoid the possibility of him uh, like losing his car and taking me or him out. So I push a bit wider. Now, this could have been a mistake because it gives him more space to open up his exit, which is kind of like the advantage you have as the outside cars to try and hold the inside car tight so that they can't open up their exit. And uh, as we go through the corner, that exit is going to end up playing a pretty good role for him. I get a bit loose on the curb as well. That doesn't really help me. So he gets a bit closer. We're just about alongside as we exit the corner now. And uh, luckily, I do have the inside for the next corner now we head side by side through it 
However, this corner is very, very uh, tricky to go too wide through. So both of us trying to get as wide as we possibly can. The apex of this corner is basically like, basically the wall right here. So you want to cut as close as you possibly can for it. I know that is my job as the inside car. I have to allow him space on the outside through that corner. My goal is to carry a lot of speed through though, so that on the exit of the corner, he kind of gets pushed a bit wide. I don't want to push him into the wall, but I do want to hit that apex, get as close as I possibly can to the wall, and then kind of dart away from the wall to open up this next corner for myself so that he doesn't just end up swinging around the outside because that pretty often will tend to happen here. Or it, not pretty often, but it's definitely possible uh, to maintain this position as the outside car going into this corner. So as we approach the next part of the corner, this is basically the start of the ascent up the hill. And this is probably where we're going to get separated. We've got him on the outside, a little bit of space on the inside. And uh, instead of turning left here, both of us actually are going to turn right, exit the track, and uh, move our cars over here to the tennis courts where we're going to settle this like gentleman. Vitor pulls up and he says, hey, uh, would you be okay settling this position on the tennis court? and asks me if that's okay. And as a high school tennis court player, my alpha self is going to say, fuck yes, yes I would. So we go onto the tennis court now, and disclaimer, I haven't played tennis in quite some time. Like I said, I played in high school, but that's really the last time I did play. Also, I've never played in a car. Now as the GOAT and the host of this channel, I get to uh, take first serve. So I'm gonna start us off here with a tail whip, practicing before I smack it like a golf club. He fortunately did not know the rules to tennis, so even though it didn't cross the white line, um, he, he didn't call an out or anything. He then takes a 360 around the ball. The crowd goes absolutely nuts for it. He then lets the ball slide down his car to build up extra momentum. And then as it reaches the tail end of his car, he whips his car around, slings it back at me. At this point, I'm still recovering from my last tail whip. So I'm facing backwards. It goes straight into my tailpipe. And this basically sets me up for the kill shot. Say hi to Jesus for me. No! <laughs> So it would be a shorter game than assumed, and I was actually able to climb back on track, drive over this tree uh, away from his dead body before P3 caught up to me. So I would end up I'm skipping ahead to the final lap now, and this is Daniel Gray's stream as I did lose the footage. Shout out to Daniel Gray on Twitch. Uh, but just th so there's proof that this did happen, there we are in the lead on the 12th lap. And uh, here are the results for that one. So we crossed the line, claiming P1 for ourselves. Vitor Gazzaninelli now finds himself joining the ranks of the elite company, Jesus Christ and Lazarus, to be the only three people to ever come back from the dead. We did gain I rating. We did gain safety rating. A great comeback from that race uh, that we had with Luis. So into the next race, P5 for ourselves. The two at the top two are way faster than the uh, next three. So not worry about those guys. Please don't kill me. I second that. Let's uh, race like a top split, not a bottom split. And into the race we go. So our third race of the day at Bathurst. We are starting in P5. We got Vitor once again ahead of us. We're moving to the outside as the cars behind don't really get good enough of a launch to put us under pressure. They are going to end up putting each other under pressure as Vitor goes a bit wide ahead of us, gets loose on that curve. Uh, not quite going to be able to make a move work just yet. Perhaps an opportunity to slipstream our way past him. But we're going to end up lifting instead and just deciding to stay behind him. Not in a big rush immediately. We have a uh, space behind us. However, he just doesn't really, I mean, he kind of rides the brakes really hard on the inside and I end up kind of half sending a move. It almost opened itself up anyway, but uh, we do end up settling behind. Now, the guy who begged for his life at the beginning is about to get taken out by car number two as he goes into the wall. This guy trying to make a, a pretty optimistic dive up the inside there. And yeah, 18. Yeah, let's just stick our nose there. Perfect. He did literally beg for his life before this, so I imagine. I mean, honestly, that's why I never even, I never begged for my life before a race, because when you beg for your life, you put a target on your back. We almost die there going up the hill, and uh, we lose a little bit of time to buy tour. I'm not too worried about that. If anything, that should make him feel more comfortable to uh, just take the mountain at full pace as the leader is already beginning to pull away. So I really just want everyone to get around as quickly as we can. Vitor pretty quickly catches P3 now. So he's just a couple of tents behind P3, coming down Skyline and towards the Dipper for the first time, everybody making it through. Uh, going a bit deep, the cars ahead, I would I would say, a Vitor especially. So he's going. we're going to have to lift for him again as we head in towards the elbow and sitting behind. It's, it's really not worth it, even if you get a better run there to try and make a move, unless you are literally seconds faster than somebody 
somebody like specifically through the elbow. It's just not worth it to risk your life there. We have put a good amount of space behind ourselves or between ourselves and Jacob, who is 0.8 seconds behind us now. And it seems like he may be falling back even further than that. He's slightly under pressure from the car behind him. So I think that we should be able to kind of safely pull away here and not really worry. P3, car number three, taking way too much speed into the end of the chase, and he's going to ride the dirt. Vitor gets a really good run through there, potentially going side by side. They are indeed. I am behind them, going to try and figure out which car I want to follow. End up deciding to try and follow the inside car for some reason, unbeknownst to me. You really should follow the outside car there. There's a higher likelihood that he gets a better run. Um, however, in this instance, the inside car actually did hold it through and got that position back before turn one of lap two so maybe i had the right instinct there just wasn't able to back it up uh it was a skill issue i guess so following vitor down towards turn two we're 0.1 seconds behind him looking like it could be an overtaking opportunity if i was absolutely insane which i'm not i'm just going to kind of dip my nose in just to show in his mirrors but in no world was I really looking for that move. He had the slipstream of the car ahead the entire time, so the speed difference really was non-existent. We were just kind of following him through, uh, even though it seemed like there may have really been one. There really wasn't. And had we made that move and it didn't work out, all we would have done was fall off of uh, Martin in P3, which it looks like we're kind of doing anyway, as Vitor has a bit of a rough run uh, in the very beginning of the ascent up the mountain. Immediately pulls away from me after that, though, and then disappears from existence blinking back in, hitting the wall, going deep through here, almost hitting this wall. We are having to slow down once again early for him. And at this point, I am starting to get worried about P3 uh, dusting us and breaking the slipstream to Vitor. And then it would turn into a fight between me and Vitor, uh, potentially to the end of the race. So I would rather have this be a three horse fight if I can, if I could do anything about that. So I actually back off a little bit going towards the elbow once again, trying to let Vitor have some space. We have enough space behind us that we're not going to be under immediate pressure about a second to p6 i'm not really worried about it fast forwarding to lap number three as we barrel towards turn two same position just about once again we're starting to lose the cars behind thankfully so no real pressure there and Vitor's runs up the mountain have not been fantastic this race, so I'm hoping that this can be a solid one from him. We are back onto car number three. He's only half a second behind car number three, so we're really, I mean, there's still opportunity for P3 at this point. P2 is basically five seconds up the road. Uh, realistically, I'm not looking at that at all. I'm just focused on staying with P3. Now, this is turn like seven or eight up the mountain. Vitor into the wall, into the other wall, and we slide underneath him side by side as we head into the sweeping left-hander small lift for this corner and he backs out completely before we even get to it up into p4 now chasing down martin for a podium position currently 1.2 seconds ahead of us i'm not super worried about that i have been kind of scouting out martin's driving from the back of this little group and i think that i have the pace especially when i'm on it now granted i am not always on it uh, especially this week, I feel like a lot of times I'll think I'm on it, and then next thing you know, I'm in the wall at the elbow coming out of it. Not right now, though. Came pretty close right there, uh, but not right now. So chasing him down, we just barely, barely have a little bit of slipstream here. Now, the slipstream is probably, it goes to about 1.2 seconds back. So we're chasing him down, soaking up his slipstream. Next lap, coming down the mountain, we put a bit of separation between ourselves and Vitor, and we've just barely caught up to Martin as well. Now within a second, both directions. Uh, so both of us will be slipstream streaming uh, and by both of us I mean Vitor from me and me from Martin. Now I'm not very good at the elbow so I rely on slipstream but Martin completely misses the apex there. That's going to slow him down a lot. I just about follow him around uh, totally missing the apex myself and shifting down to first which is unnecessary. It looks like Vitor did a similar thing as he is the exact same gap behind us. So we are now heavily soaking up slipstream towards the chase and we're going to close up the gap quite a lot. It was about seven tenths at the start of the Conrad and exiting the chase now we've got it to ha about half of a second and uh, we got a better run out of there as well so it's going to continue to close as we make the final corner really really important that you carry a lot of speed around here you can get on the throttle earlier than you think just make sure that you open up that corner all of the way it is pretty crucial that you use that curb on the exit uh, to to take a as wide of a line as possible you actually want to hit that inside curb as well Martin and myself both miss it however Martin missed it a bit more severely than myself ended up going on the exit curb he is now losing quite a bit of time 0.1 seconds to us and we have 
quite a speed difference now, soaking up the slipstream, moving to the outside. It's a tough move to make, but it is definitely a possible move. We're slightly ahead. This is exactly what we need. We need to be ahead of him turning in because the mid corner is better for the inside. However, he gets a bit loose in the mid corner and we pull through ahead of him. Here's a different view of that side by side through here, trying to stay in the camber as the outside car, a bit difficult to do. You really have to hold that, uh, that inside car to a tight line. And here is the cockpit view of that, just so you can see how tight we really have to hold that line as the outside car. Typically, I feel like you can grant a little bit more space, uh, but not on that corner. Otherwise, you will find yourself sliding out. So we move up into P3 as we head onto the mountain and under some pressure now from Martin. He's pretty close behind us and mental pressure from myself as I slide into the wall. There's Martin's view of that. So that's going to put him directly on our tail, closing up by about two tenths, heading up the mountain. And uh, I know that I need to open up this gap a bit if I want to keep myself safe on the Conrad. Otherwise, the slipstream that he will have that I won't have would probably make the difference in at least allowing him to attempt to move into the chase. So we need about seven, about seven tenths between the two of us. Maybe six tenths could be enough as well. Heading through the dipper and he's right on our tail. Goes slightly deep. That's going to affect his exit of the dipper and sure enough it does. We clip the wall on the way out. That is just about optimal. Honestly, you want to use all of the track. Uh, not the greatest entry to the elbow, but we get right up against the wall, getting on the throttle early and just narrowly missing the Falcon wall on exit. Martin actually hits it behind. So that is going to impede his run a little bit, which might have saved my life as I think he was about four tenths behind me uh, and it looked like he was on course for a better run. If it had gone through, he probably would have had the opportunity to make a move here, but it didn't. And he is actually under more pressure from Vitor at the moment than I am from him. So through the chase, taking it slow, taking it safe. I have slid out here twice this week already and I'm not letting it happen for a third time. Now on lap number six, this is the battle for P7. So, or excuse me, P8. Uh, so this is the group behind us and car number six really wanting to get through here. Just creating a little pendulum effect here for everybody. Are you dumb? Funnily enough, that was the other guy who talked at the beginning of the race, and I, I'm telling you, it just goes like that. I don't know what's happening here. This is lap number nine. This is like the fight for like P20 or something. This guy is now backwards on the track into the wall, and uh, good on him to let everybody through. A terrible, terrible place to spin through the dipper. It, you always end up basically backwards if that happens to you. He gets back on track though, and uh, he's just about to the end of the race. As he goes through the chase though, he accidentally hits 88 miles per hour, and who knows where he teleports to somewhere else in time. Uh, he won't be finishing this race, that is for sure. Final lap comes around, and the gap from us to Martin, it's significant as we head towards the mountain for the final time and it wouldn't really be one that Martin was able to close. I did drive a bit conservatively on the last lap. Martin did not. Sliding out, heading up the hill, and Vitor actually goes through to claim P4 right there. And fortunately, it looks like whatever damage Martin has, he's able to drive with, so he will finish that race out. Skipping ahead to the last corner, baby. We are, I think we finished like 15 seconds behind P2 or something ridiculous like that, but we crossed the line in P3, so that is a podium position for us some much needed good positions in the last two races after that first race. Here are the results. We did cross in P3 behind Jared and Adam Katorski. As far as uh, gains went, they were pretty good. About 50, 48 I rating and a lot of safety rating. We only had two incidents. As far as lap times are concerned, let's stop looking at them. If you guys enjoyed this video, please check out my channel. Like, subscribe, it helps me a shit ton. And uh, yeah, I'm sure there's some other videos of mine that you'll like as well.